Hey, welcome back to the Sawdust Factory. In today's video, we're going to be working on a bowl. It's going to be a square bowl with a couple feet on the corners. I've seen a few of these on the internet and I thought I'd give a shot at it. I hadn't made one yet before, so this should be a fun learning experience. This piece of stock we're using is only two inches thick, so we don't have a lot of space to spare. But we're going to start by roughing it out on the bandsaw and then shrewing up the square on the sled on the table saw. So we're going to use this edge right here to determine that this is the bottom and this is the top. So first thing we're going to do is go ahead and attach a faceplate to this side. We'll have to be careful with the length of screws we use to attach this, the faceplate since the depth isn't too deep. It should be right about there. I'm using some of these shorter deck screws to hold the faceplate on. Okay, we've got the piece mounted up. First thing we're gonna do is take a nice big pass all along through here and flatten this out so we have a nice flat surface to work with. Then we're gonna form a tenon because this is the bottom of it and we'll need something to, to hold on to when we turn it around. So that's what this uh, big mark right, or the smaller of the circles is right there. I laid that out with my calipers to fit my small scroll chuck. And then we're going to cut a foot we're going to knock off this much of the corner right here, approximately, and leave a wall thickness of about that. Then we'll bevel that up to the top of the bowl, like this. And from there, we'll cut a bowl inside that'll look something like that. Okay, we've got our tenon there, and we went ahead and smoothed out the bottom of the bowl. I uh, got a little bit of tear out right there. I was using a pull cut to smooth that out. That works best for me versus a push cut, where I've got the, the gouge very much closed this way, and I'm using kind of a scraping action to establish that curve. I've got my finger locked against the tool rest in the groove right here, and that's what's giving me a nice line. So I'm just following that tool rest line, holding onto my gouge and following that line. Um, and that's, that's how I can keep the gouge in one spot as I get out here. But you do got to be careful when you do that. Make sure your tool is nice and sharp, otherwise you will get that tear out, especially on this softer live edge green here. A little bit worried about that as far as wood selection goes. This stuff back in here is really hard, hard as a rock. Uh, nice grain patterns there. Out here it's a little bit softer, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. I can actually put a depression in it with my fingernail if I want to. So at this point in time, now what we want to do is kind of pick a spot, I think somewhere right, and maybe that's too much, maybe that'll be the inside of the foot, this will be the outside. So now we want to go back and take these corners down to this first line right here.
Okay, we're almost there. You can see here we almost got rid of all the flat stuff down there. Uh, as far as Terra goes, this foot's tearing out just a little tiniest bit. And that one's doing a little bit better. You can see a couple spots there. So my goal now is to take one nice continuous pass from this point to that point there and have a nice curve in that area. Okay, here's what we have shape-wise so far. You can see I've got about a quarter of an inch where I took away the flat section right there, and it tapers down to this point right here. As far as tear out goes, I did have to go back and do a very, very light pass specifically for this foot right here. Got a little bit of a patch where the grain was compressed, but I'll just have to hand sand that out. And then this piece right here, I don't know what happened there. If a little, it's like very very minor looks really bad on camera but it doesn't look that as bad it looks like i can just kind of scrub that out with some sandpaper and then i got that spot right there so i don't know if i had a slight catch i didn't notice or what the deal was but we're going to call that good and then come back around to the bottom side here and start to develop that foot up to this point Okay, you can start to see the foot develop. I've got a small lip right here where I made that cut with the initial parting tool. So we know we're evened up real well. This is definitely one of those spots in a turning where you have to keep switching from running your bevel this way to running your bevel this way. Because if I run my bevel down too far and I contact this far wing on that spot on the bowl, I'm going to develop a really big catch and it's going to be nasty. So. We gotta keep switching back and forth and taking material out kind of progressively from each side. So I'm really starting to cut like a valley into that section. Now this foot, I don't want the foot to grow in thickness as it goes from here to here. I wanna maintain that thickness all the way through the, the body of the project. So even the bowl section should be about that thick. That's kind of the overall goal. That gives the piece really nice balance.
Okay, we're pretty close to having our final shape right here developed. Again, this is going to be a pretty flat bottom piece. It's, you know, relatively big in diameter, and it's only about, after the tenon comes off, uh, an inch and three quarters uh, deep. So it's not super deep. Um, it does make me wish I had a bottom feeder, but uh, we'll, we'll do what we can with what we got. I'm going to reposition my tool rest here so I can get a little bit better angle on some of those steps down inside there. Really want to make sure you bring your bowl around, get enough clearance. <clears throat> so the method I take on these stair steps is I kind of start my bevel on this stair step here and then take that down to there and then each one subsequent after that. That helps me from getting a catch and also allows me to kind of gauge where I'm at in the process. We've got a pretty nice consistent thickness so far. It's getting a little wide. Uh, we'll have to watch that, keep an eye on it, but we'll just keep on going and see what we end up with. Okay, this top thickness kind of snuck up on me real quick. I'm actually a little bit thinner in the rim there than I want to be. Um, that's how thick I am in the rim right now, and I haven't done anything to the top yet, so... Let's hope that turns out okay. If not, we're going to have some feet flying. Uh, I had to switch to my 3 8 bowl gouge. I'm going to come back in and clean this shape up right here. Just develop a nice soft curve around there and then fix this a little bit, clean that up, and then we'll be ready to flip it around and start that rim. Okay, we've got it turned around here. I did go ahead and sand the bottom of the piece and then I sanded the wings too. I sanded the flats and the wings with my uh, DA sander. I gotta do a little bit more, I forgot to miss, one, miss that one. Um, I tried to sand them while the lathe was spinning and almost cut my finger off. So these are like knives essentially. And trying to sand air, I mean what happened was my, my hand got in there basically and it came around and clipped me on the sharp edge. So. They're, they're pretty sharp. Keep that in mind when you're doing your sanding. Don't try and sand air of your hand. <clears throat> you might be able to power sand them, but uh, it's ill-advised, that's for sure. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and flatten up the top back to about here somewhere. And then go ahead and start hauling it out. Get the tailstock out of the way in a moment. Okay, we're almost there getting it flat. We've got a little bit more through here we got to get done. So I'm going to grab this again and peel this over. I'm going to go ahead and remark where my rim wants to kind of stop now that I got that flattened out just so I 
know what I'm working with. So I've got a line where my where I'm going to start dropping away to go down into the hole and get the depth. I'm going to go ahead and um, start taking out here, start my hollowing in this area and work my way out and then try and hit an even wall thickness and, and take it down to a flat bottom. As I'm turning this, uh, I know that the depth of the bowl pretty much wants to be like one and a half or something like that. I got a quarter inch worth of material. I started with a two inch thick piece, right? And I got a quarter inch of material for my tenon, maybe a little bit more. And I want about a quarter inch wall thickness, maybe a little bit less. So that put, puts me about an inch and a half. So I set my depth gauge for that and I can just keep on measuring and figuring out, okay, about where am I? Um, on my current thickness. Okay, so at this point in time, I'm starting to get some uh, frequency build up in the piece. You can probably see it pretty easily in the camera. Yeah, there it is. That's that wavy pattern right there. So that means the bowl is like twisting and turning due to the, the gouge rubbing on it. Um, and it's starting to kind of flex or bend. So now we have to go back to the strategy of cut the wall to the right thickness and then move on to the next section to uh, make sure the bowl is still strong enough to, to take the turning process. We're actually at thickness right about here. So we just need to go from here to there and to combat the kind of frequency building up there, I'm gonna move the tool rest in really close so I don't have a lot of tool hanging out over the tool rest because it starts to bend and that you know gets the wood going like that as well and i'm gonna start my cut right about there and just come down to just before that and then we'll have to finish this section and then finish off the bottom uh, just to keep it from moving around
Okay, we got it sanded up to about 400 or so. Now it's time to flip it over and get the bottom fixed. Okay, so there it is, all sanded up for the most part. Put a finish on there and it'll clean up nice. I'll wipe all the dust off before I do that. Uh, definitely something different, pretty interesting. Kind of looks like a bowl with like a piece of like walnut fabric laid over the top of it. There's the bottom. Um, I got a sm slight little ring right there where the spigot was, but you can't feel it. You can see it a little bit. It'll go away when I put the finish on. These are being difficult to sand, that's for sure. Um, slight tool mark in there again looks a lot worse on camera than it actually is on the piece so let's go ahead and get the dust off of it put a finish on it see what it looks like Finished piece. I do like it a lot. Looks really cool. It's got some really nice grain patterns, almost purple, in some parts of the walnut here. And the, the live edge, or more of the live wood over here, really contrasts it well. Thanks for watching the episode here at the Solidus Factory. Be sure to come back and join us again for another wood turning project. Check out my channel for more wood turning. Click the thumbs up for me and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching.